In this video, we're going to look at graph recognition at GCSE level. In the video, we're not going to be plotting graphs as such or doing any transformations. We're just going to be looking at the shape and key features of five particular types of graphs. If you want to be plotting or transforming graphs, check the website up here and there'll be a link on there for you. OK, let's start with linear graphs. Generally, at GCSE, these are in the form y is equal to mx plus c where m is a gradient and c is the y-intercept. So an example might be y is equal to 2x plus 1. So this has a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept of 1. We might have y is equal to 3x minus 4. So we've got a gradient of 3, y-intercept of minus 4. It might be written in the form y is equal to 5 minus x. So this time we've got a gradient of minus 1 and a y-intercept of 5. The key thing for us to have a straight line graph is that the term, the x term, has the highest power of 1. So we've got no x squared, we've got no x cubed, it's just x to the first power. So let's look at a few of these. We'll start off. So let's have a look at y is equal to x. So straight line, it will go from negative to positive infinity. So you just keep drawing that. That's a straight line graph. y is equal to 1 half x y is equal on this one to, uh, we'll do this one, minus 2x, y is equal to x plus 2, y is equal to 2x plus 1, and y is equal to 2 minus x. So these are all straight line graphs, and hopefully you should recognise now, if you're given a straight line graph, roughly the equation it has. So if ever our first cell, linear graphs. The next ones we're going to look at are quadratic graphs, and these are generally in the form y is equal to x squared, or some variation. So you might have y is equal to 3x squared, y is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 1. You might have y is equal to x minus 2 all squared minus 7. You might even have y is equal to 3 minus x squared. What we can see with all of these graphs, the highest power of x is x squared. When you expand this one out, you're going to get x squared, then you'll have minus 4x and plus 4. So we're always going to have the highest power is going to be an x squared term. We can, of course, have 4x in here, that's fine, but we need the highest power to be an x squared term. So let's look at that. This is now, and this is y is equal to x squared. We call this a parabola. And it's symmetric, in this case, about the y-axis. So if we look here, 1 squared gives us 1, 2 squared gives us 4, minus 1 squared gives us 1, and minus 2 squared gives us 4. So this is a parabola, and it's symmetric about this point. It doesn't always, always have to be symmetric about the y-axis. This one is symmetric about the line x is equal to 3. So you can see at this point just here, it's the same as this point just here. And it's a mirror image in this line. We might have a negative x squared. So this one is going to be now minus x squared plus 1. So we should be spotting now that this is going to be a negative x squared or a negative quadratic graph. So they're basic quadratic graphs. OK, key feature, x squared is the highest power of x. Next one's cubic graphs. So these will be in the form y is equal to x cubed, or some variation of this. So y is equal to 3x cubed. y is equal to 2x cubed plus x squared minus 4x plus 1. Or we could have y is equal to x minus 4 all cubed plus 7. We might have y is equal to 3 minus x cubed. So what we can see in these is the highest power of x is x cubed. We can still have an x squared, we can still have x to the first power, but we need to have the highest power of x cubed. When we look at the graph now, we'll put up here, this is just going to be y is equal to x cubed. We can see that it's coming up through what we call the third quadrant and out the first quadrant. This is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, here's the third and here's the fourth. So this comes round and goes out. If we look uh, closely at this one, let's see if we can just pick some points. So we know that 1, and let's just go back, zoom in on that, 1 cubed is going to give us 1, minus 1 cubed is minus 1. We've got now 2 cubed is 8, and then we've got now minus 2 cubed is minus 8. So that is a cubic graph. 
We could have a different cubic graph. This one is a different one. You're less likely to see this in a GCSE question, but all that's happened is this has been transformed. Okay, it's just moved two to the right and five up. So just look out for the general shape. We might have a negative cubic graph. So a negative will come through and start in the second quadrant and go out the fourth quadrant. So this is minus x cubed. So that's the standard shape of the cubic graph. And we recognize that by the highest power of x in the equation being x cubed. OK, exponential graphs. These are often called growth and decay, or growth or decay functions. And they're written in the form y is equal to a to the power of x. So we write y is equal to a to the x. a has to be greater than 0, and a cannot be equal to 1. If you draw the graph y is equal to 1 to the x, you'll see that you get a pretty boring graph. When we look at this, we're going to uh, study some of the key features. I don't want to go into too much detail um, with the exponential graphs. I may do later in the video, but for now, I want to get the rough idea of the shape. So what we're going to do is y is equal to, and I'll write it just here, we will do y is equal to 2 to the power of x. So what we're going to have is the following. Let's put this on here. A key feature of an exponential graph is unless it's been transformed, it will always go through the point 0, 1. In when it's positive, it will get very, very uh, uh, tall, large, uh, what am I looking for, big, very quickly. So when x is very uh, positive, this gets huge. So if we scroll out on this, okay, we can see now that this is going to get massive and it gets very quick, very um, very big, very quick. Now, the other side, what we end up doing, when we have negative numbers, this tends to zero. It will never be zero. So if I grab the calculator, what we can look at now, let's find it. If I now put in 2 to the power of 100, so 100 is somewhere up here, this is going to get huge. That's huge. 1.26 times 10 to the power of 30. If I change this now to minus 100, that's going to get tiny, but it's still not going to be zero. And what happens is, as a result, we have something called an asymptote. And I'll just quickly sketch this. This is never equal to zero, so what we end up having is the following. The general shape of now the exponential growth is something like so. And this point here is 0, 1. We have the asymptote, and we can put the asymptote on like so. And in this case, it's the x-axis. And it says that this can never be naught. We do the asymptote with a, a broken line like so. Just out of interest, if you had now y is equal to 1 half to the power of x, that would come the other way. Okay, And if you do a bit of a thinking that might make sense so that'll look something like that again it will never be negative so that's 2 to the x we could have 3 to the x again it's going through the point 0 comma 1 but you can see 3 to the power 1 is 3 then if we get 3 squared it's 9 and then it's going to get very big very quickly so they are what we call exponential graphs okay Let's now go on to the last type that we're interested in, and they are called reciprocal graphs. The reciprocal graph, the general form you'll meet at GCSE, is y is equal to 1 over x. Now, if we consider this, and looking at the graph, it might make sense. As x gets very big, this is going to get very small, because we're dividing. So if I just quickly drew some table, a table of values, and what I'll do, I'll put it just here. Um, I'm going to put naught in, but we'll just discuss naught shortly. So here, here are the x values, okay, and here are the y values. So 1, 2, 3, 4. When x is going to be 1, y is going to be 1. 1 over 1 is 1. 1 over 2 is a half. 1 over 3 is a third. 1 over 4 is a quarter. As x gets very big, this is going to get very small. Now minus 1 will give us minus 1. Minus 2 will give us minus 1 half, and then minus 3 will give us minus 1 over 3. So let's look at the end result of that. And you can see here if I've missed out 0. Let's put this on. So this is going to be 
y is equal to 1 over x. The graph, again, doesn't pick up the asymptotes. But let's just consider, as x is getting very big, this is going to get very small. Okay? And we can see exactly the same is going to be happening over here. Let's just consider this point, though, and I'll, I'll zoom in. If we pick half, 1 divided by half gives us 2. 1 divided by a quarter is going to give us now 4. Okay, So if we divide 1 by a quarter, we're going to end up with 4. And that's that point just there, if you look at the scale. As x tends to 0, this becomes undefined. In maths, we can't divide by 0. 1 over 0 is undefined. Therefore, what we end up getting is the following. Okay, And we will have something looking like so. So this is the general shape. And it will come round like so. It will never touch that point right here. And then it will come around right here. And we will have vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Vertical asymptote on the y-axis. And a, a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis. And that's the general shape. In terms of spotting the shapes, you don't need to get the exact um, exact uh, information going on. But a rough idea of sh uh, graph shapes is what you're going to need. So let's quickly recap what we've seen. So this right here, this is the uh, what we call a reciprocal graph, 1 over x. Okay. This one right here was the exponential graph. Okay. And that got very big very quickly, and it was never zero. We also had a cubic graph, which looks something like that. We had a quadratic graph, and the quadratic was a parabola. Some people like to call it a bucket. That's a positive one. You can have a negative one upside down. And we also looked at straight line equations, linear uh, equations. Now let's have a look at that. And that's a straight line. What you're likely to be asked to do in an exam is recognise them. So I think the last two examples, we've gone a bit too deep into it in comparison to what we need to. But hopefully it's given you an idea. So... What I've done now, hopefully you can see these, I've plotted some graphs, and what we need to do is state which is which. So, don't mind how you want to do it, you can generally start by looking at the graphs and thinking, I know what that looks like, or looking at these and thinking which one could it be. The way I like to think about it now is the following. I know that this is a straight line graph. So along here, I look for x to the first power. The only one that's got that is this one right here. Now, you might think that that would look nice as y is equal to minus 2x plus 1. So we can see this point here, and that point, if you're not quite seeing it, is going to be 0, 1, and then we've got a gradient of minus 2. If we look at the gradient, it's going down 2 for every one it goes across. But it's the only straight line. So what we can do, and I'll put a box around that, that one is going to be this one just here. OK. That one's done. The next one I like to look at is the quadratic. We can tell this is a parabola and that's going to be a quadratic. I can see that the one with the highest power of x is the x squared plus 2. And that one's just moved up by 2 units. So all we've got is x squared and that's moved up. So that's that one. Okay, And we could write x squared plus 2. OK, let's now I'll switch pens. I think I'm going to run out of pens, but never mind. All we've got to deal with now are these three. We've got 2 over x. We've got 3 lots of x cubed. And y is equal to 4 to the power of x. 4 to the power of x is an exponential. The power is what's going to be changing. And these all look similar to this right here. So this is going to be y is equal to 4 to the x. We can see it's going through that point 0, 0, 1. It's going to get very small here when we're negative, And then get very big very quick. That point there is 1, 4. 4 to the power 1 is 4. So that's that one sorted. So all we've got left now is the reciprocal and the cubic. Hopefully you can now spot a cubic looks something like so. So this one is going to be y is equal to 3x cubed. And then the final one, all this is saying now is y is equal to 2 lots of 1 over x. 2 over x is 2 lots of 1 over x. And this is going to be the reciprocal graph. So there we go. Brief intro. This is the kind of question you've got. So if you weren't too happy on the whole asymptote thing, on the last thing, uh, on these two, don't worry too much. All you're trying to do is recognise the general shapes of graphs and tell the examiner 
which one is which.